Greetings viewers and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the subject of CRT cataract removal. Zenith style and RCA style. CRT cataracts is the condition where the PVA glue that bonds the safety glass to the face of the CRT and is sandwiched in between the two begins to degrade from exposure to the atmosphere at its edges. Zenith style CRTs such as the Rowland manufactured tube in this airline console turn a sort of yellow green at the edge and remain otherwise transparent. Okay, this is what a Zenith style cataract looks like up close. You can see the sort of yellow green discoloration along the perimeter of the CFT. Zenith removal is first, the RCA wire removal is at 31 minutes, and the RCA standard removal is at 53 minutes. RCA tubes, on the other hand, tend to turn a black and or white moldy speckly color at the edges. And this is a close-up of what an RCA style cataract looks like. Both of these will be fairly noticeable when watching programming on the set. They're both the same material, but they were mixed, I believe, in different ratios and degrade differently with age. Zenith and RCA were the two largest manufacturers of color CRTs in the time period when this style of bonded safety glass was popular. Most of the other smaller manufacturers usually conform to one type or another and can be dealt with using the methods of one style or the other. Zenith style is my favorite to deal with because it's so easy to work with. Basically, in any temperature, you can take a cold steel guitar string and slice completely through the PVA layer, peel off the old glue once the safety glass has been separated by cutting the glue, and then reattach the safety glass. RCA type CRTs are somewhat more dangerous because the glue they use is a harder mixture of PVA. Because of its hardness, it, can, it cannot be cut with guitar string and instead has to be separated either with large amounts of heat, which puts the tube at risk of cracking and imploding, or some have had success using a soak in water over several months to separate the safety glass. I've not had luck with that method, so I don't even bother to try it anymore. So what I'll be doing today is attempting a removal of a Zenith style cataract on this tube made by Zenith subsidiary Rowland in this airline and a RCA type removal on the RCA tube in this RCA console. This process requires removing and uninstalling the TV chassis from the cabinet first and then removing and uninstalling the CRT and putting it into a bucket or trash bin of slightly smaller diameter than the tube. Today I'll be using five gallon buckets because it's what I've got on hand. Removing the chassis and CRT will now be a snap. Here's the tag on the RCA tube and the serial number tag which it should indicate that this is the original CRT for this television set. I can confirm that by checking the serial number on the chassis. Interesting thing on this RCA that I didn't know until I got into it is the entire bottom of the cabinet is metal. I have not seen that before. Wait, so the wood cabinet has four legs and the metal bottom has mounting points for four legs too. Hmm. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. How did the pig tracks get on the ceiling? Spider-Pig, Spider-Pig, does whatever a spider-pig does. This probably is the same panel they would have used on metal cabinet table model versions of this set. Probably also had a wood table model version of this set, given that there's this metal panel. They probably would have had a very similar cabinet, only they would have 
removed these side legs and made the top slightly narrower would be my guess. Or they just made a one-off custom metal bottom panel for all of their consulates. It'd be interesting to hear from someone who was servicing these sets when they were new, which was actually the case. I lied. Snap for uh, you watching this, but roughly 20 minutes on average. The process varies from television to television, so I won't go into it in detail. In fact, I'll save that for another video if anyone's interested in a generalized rundown. For specific televisions, you'll want to get the SAMS PhotoFAC manual for your specific television. Go through the disassembly instructions. A little bit of common sense also helps. So, in the time that I was doing that disassembly, we went from a balmy 86 degrees. Well, it is still 86 degrees, but it is now overcast instead of sunny. Now, before the cataract removal can be done, the tape along the perimeter of the CRT needs to be removed. Doing the cataract removals on these Zenith CRTs is really nice. They, I've never had a circumstance where I wasn't able to get the safety glass off intact and reuse it on a Zenith style cataract. RCA cataracts if you're as impatient as I am, are tricky to do without destroying the safety glass, which if it happens mid-removal, which it usually does, makes the process of removal quite hellish. So, to do the cataract removal, you need uh, number 18 steel guitar string. I use single strand, as I've had good luck with it. Um, you need a couple of wood handles of some type. I've just basically grabbed some wood stock, cut it down to the right size, and screwed on my uh, cutting wire. Let's get started. The safety glass is here. You've got the squishy, sticky PVA glue in between it. It's sort of a lip you can get your finger into. And below it is the face of the CRT. You get your wire between the face of the CRT and the safety glass in the area where the glue is, and you start working your wire back and forth. This does require a bit of arm strength, and before you get started, you should really have some better safety gear than I do. I've done so many of these Zenith CRT cataract removals without any incident that I no longer have any fear of bodily harm to myself. However, you should probably take care when do while doing this, especially if this process is new to you. When doing RCA style cataract removals, it's a little bit more important because those tend to involve circumstances far more likely to cause implosion than what I'm doing now. Turn this towards you so you can see this better. Oh. I hate it when the guitar string loops against itself like this. That's never good. And the string snapped. Try not to let your string fold around like this. Because when it does, that kind of ruins its strength and it snaps off. And we are back with fresh string. This should be easier to get back into than it was to get into in the first place because we already did the cut, but maybe it won't be. Nope, it's going. Okay, camera. So I should loop that just a Scoosh tighter, whatever. Just do that now. There we go. Okay. Already halfway through. Voila! 
through and removed. Now I just gotta peel it. Okay, now that we have the safety glass separated, the safety glass separated from the CRT face, we need to clean both surfaces with glass cleaner and goof off. Goof off first, after peeling of the old PVA. Now, in the center, the PVA will be fairly solid, but at the edge, it is really gooey and stringy. Basically, where there's the most PVA, which today happens to be the safety glass, sometimes it's the surface of the CRT, it just depends on how things end up when you do the removal. So just start rolling it towards the center. Work your way all around and start rolling it. These Zenith types tend to turn into goo when they degrade. And they tend to be soft, especially on the edge, but the entirety of the PVA will be soft on the Zenith types. RCA style, the PVA is hard. And kind of like a lightly flexible plastic. Versus this, which is sort of like a uh, vinyl pool toy material. In fact, Xena style smells quite a lot like a uh, brand new inflatable pool toy while you're doing the cataract removal. Hoping to get this done before the impending, what sounds like thunderstorms, start dropping rain on me. Sometimes you can pull, but you'll also tend to tear when you pull. Rolling is slower and more laborious, but you won't tear the material when you do that. I'm just going to do whatever works to get this off. I'm probably going to get some time lapse in here because this is a somewhat tedious process getting the bulk of the glue off. Once the bulk of the glue is off, then the residue will have to be removed with goof off followed by glass cleaner. So I want to elaborate a little bit on the cataract removal methods. Zenith style cataracts can be removed both with the guitar string method and with the uh, heat gun method used on RCA tubes normally. I've seen examples of people who have cataracted Zenith style CRTs with the heat gun method. Why you would want to do that when the guitar string method is so effective and so much safer, I don't know, but it can be done that way. RCA style cataracts there are basically three methods that I'm aware of. One method is to heat the tube in the sun with wedges and to let the heat of the sun and the force of the wedges delaminate the tube over the course of several hours. I've only had luck with that method on tubes that had a less than seven inch diameter patch where the glue was still usable. On tubes with bigger patches of good glue that method has not been effective for me. Uh, however, I do believe it is potentially effective in hot climates in the south. Um, there's also the water removal method, and that method I have tried by submerging picture tubes in water for months on end and not seen any significant progress in the cataract coming loose. I have seen the water method be effective in extreme circumstances over extreme periods of time. In one instance, I saw a number of picture tubes that were stored in a damp and periodically flooding basement for several decades that were cataracted so badly the glue had no adhesion left anywhere. In addition to the sun method, there's also using heat lamps and a heat gun. I found RCA cataracts respond best when the tube is evenly heated up in the sun and or under heat lamps a long preheat cycle to around 150 degrees where the glue starts to let loose. That's eh, getting closer. Once the glue is hot, the delamination can then be coaxed along with wedges and a heat gun. Okay, the inside of the safety glass is cleaner. Most of the PVA glue has been removed from it, but it is still not anywhere near completely clean. 
follow up, we'll be wiping it down with significant amounts of goof off and napkins. Followed by Windex. You'll want to get both sides of your safety glass absolutely spotless, which will take a significant amount of time with rags and cleaning solution. And you'll also want to get the face of your CRT spotless. In fact, I still need to remove a lot of PVA from this. Get off of there. Let's just... Petroleum snot. Petroleum snot. Get off my hand. I gotta wash my hands off. Goof off. It's too sticky to do anything anymore. The reason I consider heating a tube so dangerous is back when I was experimenting trying to find a technique that worked for me, the Cataract RCA CRTs, the first tube I did, I ended up cracking the safety glass off of it and having a patch of safety glass and glue in the center that was stubborn. On numerous tubes while I was experimenting, I damaged safety glass and ended up having to chisel the safety glass off very carefully. The, the first tube that that happened with, I got frustrated and put it into water to try the water method. And didn't realize that the water, which was in the shade, was probably... 60 to 70 degrees and the face of the tube was a hundred some degrees and the tube face ended up cracking from the temperature differential it experienced. Yeah, it's time to bring the camera in. Okay, a little bit of cleaning and one dinner later, and we are almost done with the face of the CRT. In another instance where I was experimenting with the sun method, I was trying to use mirrors to gather more sunlight to heat the tube more. And the mirrors unevenly shined on the face of the tube, creating a hot spot that caused the face of the tube and the bell of the tube to fracture. Both of those incidents could have ended in implosion. Which is why any method that changes the temperature of a tube significantly 
has to be done very carefully. So this video is intended to be a complete introduction to cataract removal, containing a standard Zenith, a non-standard RCA, and a standard RCA cataract removal. There was a lot of footage in this video, and I had to use a lot of fast motion in order to pack it into one video of reasonable length. For those who don't like the fast motion, I could easily split this video up into three separate cataracting videos, showing off each type of cataract removal procedure. And uh, please let me know in the comments if you would like me to take the three different cataract removal procedures and separate them out into their own dedicated videos. I love it when the black ants are about the same size as the black garden spiders, so you don't know which is just about to crawl up your leg. In order to make this video fit within my target runtime, I had to cut out another non-standard cataract removal that I performed recently. That will probably be its own future video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video when it comes out. I'm glad I picked today to do the Zenith CRT removal because with the rain and overcast, it wouldn't have been a good day to do the RCA CRT removal. And the next day was a nice sunny day, which made for great weather for doing an RCA-style cataract removal. Whenever you can preheat the tube in the sun, that's vastly preferable to operating purely with heat lamps and the assistance of heat guns. The guns and lamps are helpful, but it's best to do it with the sun first. The next removal that you'll see is a RCA cataract removal using the Zenith wire method, which is very unusual as RCA CRTs normally don't respond to that method at all. Um, I've only had that successfully occur with a Philco CRT that was hard on the outside like an RCA but squishy on the inside like a Zenith. A Conrack that had an RCA style cataract that it was only a 9 inch CRT so somehow it responded quite well to the wire method and this particular RCA that you're about to see in a few moments now possibly you want to do this work outside on a sunny day as it helps you to see any dirt PDA residue that might be remaining on your safety glass. What you want to do is get the uh, safety glass inside and outside and the CRT face as spotless as you possibly can before reattaching the safety glass. How we're going to reattach the safety glass on this CRT is by using four double stick foam tape spacers, each one being roughly an eighth of an inch thick. Okay, we have the CRT face as clean as it's going to get, and we have the safety glass about as clean as it's going to get. Now, safety glass can be a normal clear transparent sheet of glass, or it can have four flavors added to it. Black tint, green tint, frosted, and cherry. And you can add any combination of the flavors except for the black and the green. I hear black cherry safety glass is especially delicious, but I've never found any. This piece of safety glass is black tinted and frosted. I found CRTs that have frost and tint generally tend to have a certain amount of non-removable haze to the surface of the CRT face. And the frosted and tinted safety glass tends to hide that. The PVA also would help to optically smooth that out, but we are not putting PVA back between the uh, glass. I've laid down four double stack strips of foam double stick tape that will act as spacers and positioners. I've got the CRT face and the inside of the safety glass as clean as I believe I can get them. I'm going to just line this up and press down once I feel like the alignment is good and it feels pretty good. The double stick tape I use for the process is this stuff. You can get it at Home Depot and probably a number of other retailers, but Home Depot is where I got this. Um, it's half as thick as I want it to be and it's twice as wide as I want it to be, so I cut it lengthwise down the middle and double it up 
and make my strips. The strips don't have to be precisely positioned or of precise length, they just have to be there, crudely centered, and roughly the thickness that the PVA was spacing the safety glass away from the face of the CRT. Now that that's done, we can proceed to caulking the safety glass on. I'm going to go with this GE Silicon 2 Clear. This has worked pretty good for me in the past, though I'm starting to favor black caulk because it is a similar darkness to the non-phosphored edge, and if you accidentally get a little bit of it into the screen area, if it's a smooth edge on it, you may not immediately notice it versus transparent and colored caulks, which may make the, uh, the caulk incursion noticeable. Let's just get rid of a little bit of this. Now what you want to do is you want to force just a little bit of caulk into the uh, area, the gap between the CRT and the safety glass. You don't want to go in too far this way. You want to try to limit it to roughly a quarter inch max, and you don't need a ton of penetration as long as you're sealing. This caulk will hold the safety glass on in a more permanent capacity and will also seal out dust and foreign materials and contaminants that the static electricity of the high voltage that's applied to the CRT in operation um, pulls in to uh, basically the CRT's uh, outer surfaces, anything that air can get at. It'll pull dust in like, a, all that high voltage will pull dust in like a magnet. So if we seal this with caulk, we will never have to remove the safety glass from the face of the CRT ever again to clean it. Now you want to, of course, make sure that the inside of your safety glass and the face of the CRT are as clean as you can get them before you do this. If there's any dust or lint in there when you uh, seal it up, that's, that dust and lint will be there until you tear the safety glass off again in the future, which, if you're me, you'd probably prefer not to do. I have CRTs that have been that have had the cataracts removed and have been caulked 10 years ago that are still flawless. But these style CRTs where the safety glass was bonded to the face of the CRT with transparent PVA glue were only uh, prevalent in new televisions for approximately a decade from the early 60s to the early 70s. And this was originally introduced on round screen color CRTs in the early 60s, probably somewhere between 61 and 63, I'd like to say. The CRT that used this was the uh, 21 FJP22 and a few others. During that time period, you could get two styles of CRT safety glass. You could get bonded where it was glued to the face of the CRT and non-bonded where the safety glass was still in front of the uh, face of the CRT but instead of being glued all the way across the surface of the face with PVA, the glass was not glued and had a rubber gasket around its perimeter. The rubber gasket would space it and seal out contamination. And fingers on the mounting hardware would hold the safety glass to the face of the screen. I figure that when the uh, cataract removal is done, if you silicone the safety glass back on, on a round CRT, you're effectively converting it from the 21FJP bonded style to the 21FBP gasketed safety glass style. As far as I'm aware, there were no gasketed rectangular color CRTs, but I figure if this conversion is safe on the round CRTs, it probably is safe on the rectangulars. And honestly, in the something like two to three hundred vintage televisions I've owned, and probably probably 20 to 30 cataracts I've dealt with, I've never had an implosion. The chances of this CRT imploding if I treat it properly are virtually nil. Now that the entire perimeter of the CRT has been caulked, we can sit back and wait 24 hours for the caulk to cure. We don't want there to be any flowage to the caulk when we remount it in the television set. If you don't wait the full 24-hour cure time, 
and you plunk this tube face down into a cabinet that's laying face down on the floor and bolt it in and the face is being, of the safety glass is being pressed into the face of the CRT, the caulk gap will be compressed and it will squeeze the caulk in and it will end up being squeezed into the viewable area of the phosphor screen, which you do not want. Okay, now we wait 24 hours and reinstall the CRT in the cabinet tomorrow. Okay, it's a new day. It's almost been 24 hours. This is fairly dry. Just about ready to remount. It's sunny and 83 outside. And this CRT, I've given a light clean up to get the nicotine film and uh, HV attracted dirt off of the face. And this gives a much better view of what, uh, what all has occurred to this tube over the years with the cataract. It's already started to delaminate in places. I think the sun reflection gives some idea of where it has along the edge. As I was saying before my battery ran out, in order to get the safety glass to come off of an RCA style cataract like this, you have to heat the surface of the tube to around 100 to 160 degrees. About 150 is the point where the 140, 150 approximately is the point where the glue starts letting go. In order to do that without turning this into a bomb, you want to heat the tube in the hot summer sun gradually over the course of a few hours so that the tube does not crack and implode from the stress that is applied to the glass on rapid temperature change. Now what I do is I use a very thin screwdriver and I jab into a decomposed portion of the glue, pry out chunks, and then once I have evenly placed chunks on all sides, I take half of a wooden clothespin and just pop them apart and you've got yourself a nice little wedge and you stick it in on both sides symmetrically and don't apply any more force than you can with just your hands. If you start banging on these wedges you'll crack the safety glass and then getting it off becomes a very uh, a very hellish procedure of uh, taking uh, screwdrivers and hammers and heat guns and chipping and melting and prying and it's, it's not fun. You don't want to go there. So I'm going to finish getting all of this wedged up and continue from there. Before I finish wedging this thing up, for those that might doubt me that the wire method doesn't work on RCA type cataracts, no way. Works on this one? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. This will be only the second RCA looking cataract that the wire method has had an effect on. The only other one that looked like an RCA cataract that the wire had an effect on was a Philco CRT. But that one, despite being hard on the edges, was gooey in the center. Normally genuine RCA tubes won't even let the wire go in the something like inch that it's done on this tube. But now it's stalling out, so... Wait. We got something again. Holy mackerel, it's doing it. This is taking a lot more arm strength than a typical Zenith tube, but we're making progress. What's the temperature on the tube face? 125 Fahrenheit, something like that? I guess the heat has softened up the PVA enough for this to be somewhat viable. probably be wearing safety glasses since this is under thermal stress from the sun and other stress from me ink. Whoa! And that's how hard I'm pulling. My guitar string snapped. That's not ideal. I'm gonna come back to this. And we're back. I think I've attached this paddle well enough to uh, 
be able to yoink on it again. We're going to proceed with this since it's working. Yeah, this definitely isn't going as good as it would with the green scene of PDA. Still, I am heavily impressed that it did this much. arm strength to get that further in there, so I'm going to try other weirdness since I'm here. That screw is starting to back out. That's not good. walk around when I'm not looking. Uh, I didn't dump them, no, I didn't dump them in my pocket. This is why I can't have nice things. If I turn around there, oh, there they are. Yeah, I think I'm definitely exceeding the mission statement of this guitar string. That's just great. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the center with this, but this will help loosen up the edges, so... I'm going to see what I can accomplish on the edges. I'll just have to do the center in my usual manner. Wear gloves, the wrapped ends of the guitar string can be sharp.
Okay, we're back. I glued up my finger, added on an extra layer, uh, added on a layer to help prevent uh, glass from sticking in my arm if this thing implodes. Won't stop it, it'll just reduce how deep it penetrates. So that's good. Traction. Are we even pointed at the CRT anymore? Okay, I'm still fine. Okay, we've got more battery. It's climbed up to about 132, and with some wedges in here in addition to the string, the delamination lines went from about here to about here on this side. So let's see if we can saw through it some more. And break our string again. Whoopee! And it broke off inside the glass. This is. This is shaping up to be good. I'll be back. Okay, this is the last guitar string I have of this thickness. The rest I have are thinner. So, this is kind of turning into a documentation of uh, educated fucking around rather than any kind of uh, demonstration of normal practice. This is going to come off on its own with the sun at this rate. I can see the delamination very slowly creeping. You know, I'm going to stop working hard and start working smart. I think at this point it's better to just gently wedge it all around and let let the sun do the heavy lifting. It's really surprising that the, uh, that the, uh, Zenith uh, guitar string method actually is working on an RCA tube. I've tried it on many, many RCA tubes, probably as many as 10, and nothing has ever responded favorably in an actual RCA-made tube. I've had one Philco-made CRT that uh, had an RCA looking cataract, but it was soft in the middle, unlike the RCA cataracts, which are usually 
uniformly fairly hard throughout. You can just you can just see the uh, delamination progressing. This little spot right here is all that's really holding the safety glass onto the face of the CRT anymore. It's progressing any moment now. You should hear a nice pop when it lets go. Three, two, one. Yep, there we go. And now I should be able to lift this off of here, just like that. And the center stayed with the safety glass and the edge stayed with the CRT. Sweet. Let's just kind of knock all that stuff off. Okay. CRT is almost completely cleaned off. Let's Shift our focus into here and get the gunk off the safety glass. The RCA cataracts are very plasticky, so they peel really nicely. Just like that, we're ready for goof off. The one advantage to the uh, RCA cataracts over the Zenith type is once you get the lens separated from the CRT, getting the glue off is easy. Okay, both CRTs have had the uh, cataract PVA removed, and both have had the safety glasses caulked back on. Here you can see the completed CRTs. This is the uh, RCA CRT. The uh, caulking is all dry, at least dry enough to reinstall. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit sloppy on the side surface, just as long as you're not sloppy on the face surface. You don't want to be sloppy on the face surface. And here's the RCA CRT. I think I got the caulk slightly smoother on this. I was fighting a tube that wanted to uh, plug itself up every few seconds, but good enough. So the RCA CRT is very unusual. Most CRTs of RCA style cataracts, especially ones that are genuine RCA products, usually the glue is substantially too hard to even start to get the guitar string in. But this one cut with guitar string is very, very unusual for an RCA style CRT cataract. And even more unusual for a genuine RCA tube. The normal procedure would have been to have uh, put those clothespins in and let the sun work on it. Now, here in Wisconsin, the sun is not always as hot as it would be, say, in Florida or California or the Southwest. So. Oftentimes what I do is I hang a 250 watt incandescent heat lamp up above the tube, probably about here, and use that after the tube sat in the sun for about an hour or so, I'll turn on the heat lamp and I'll let the heat lamp boost the temperature slowly even further. And once I start to see some 
mild increase in the delamination from the uh, wedged clothespins, what I'll do is I'll get out a heat gun and I will do circles slowly progressing inward from the edge of the delamination and try to cover the whole surface of the CRT slowly but generally focusing on the edge of the delamination. Uh, you have to be very careful using a heat gun not to stay in one spot for too long. If you focus your heat anywhere and you unevenly heat the surface of the CRT, the CRT can and in cases of some other people who've done this will implode. You do have a little bit of saving grace in that usually the PVA doesn't conduct heat quite as efficiently as the glass but still be very careful if you do it that way. CRT cataract removal on RCA types that require heat from the sun or any type of heat source are a do-at-your-own risk proposition. Also, when doing them, be sure to wear proper safety gear. I didn't for the most part during this procedure because if I am in full riot gear with leather jackets and shields and face shields and all that business, I'll end up being so hot that I'll just die of heat stroke anyway. If I'm going to die doing CRT cataract removal, I want to die like a man and have the CRT explode. I don't want to die like a pathetic Karen killed by my own safety equipment. Zenith type cataract removal as long as you're careful not to neck the CRT, handle it excessively roughly, as long as you don't subject it to, to large mechanical shock, and you don't get crazy and start trying to heat the tube up, Zenith cataract removals are pretty much are pretty much safe. I, I don't ever bother wearing any safety equipment when doing Zenith style cataract removal. You can, you can do a Zenith type cataract removal on a 45 degree fall evening with just lighting from outdoor lights with no sun, no nothing. And the Zenith cataract removal will work. You don't have to heat the tube or subject it to any thermal gradients that might cause hazard. So Zenith cataract removal is really safe. RCA, on the other hand, that is, that is something you have to take great care in doing. And I'm probably rambling. But all that's left to do now is this one dry and get this one into its TV and tomorrow get that one into its TV. And here's the end result. Two sets without cataracts. I'm not finished yet. There's more. Let me okay, bonus footage time for the CRT cataract removal video. Um, I acquired this uh, CTC 16 roundy uh, to take the CRT out of it and put it into my uh, Zenith uh, Space Command 600 Chancellor combination, which is right here. The CTC-16, despite having a really nice cabinet on it, has a bad flyback, so it is not really worth my effort to try to make it a working TV. I'm gonna see if someone else wants to do that since the cabinet's nice. And I'm going to work on the CRT. We got ourselves a heat lamp going on it. And we have about 145 degree temperature on it, give or take in various places on it, between the heat lamp and the uh, warm Wisconsin sun. So we're going to hit this thing with a heat gun and try to make the, uh, I think you can see the delamination uh, going on. We're going to see if we can get all that delamination evenly and uniformly pushed in from the edges to the center. If we can get that to happen using a heat gun, we can get the safety glass off. And the goal here is get the safety glass off in one piece. Don't break the fairly decent CRT and uh, reunite the two in a cataract free manner after the fact. So let's get on it. Actually, before we get on it, it's been a while since these have been snugged up. Let's just re-snug these a little bit. Or at least check the snugness a bit. Okay. 
Oh. I should try the old, uh, the old wire technique to prove that it isn't going to work on the CRT. I already tried it cold, but we'll, we'll do it warm just for, just to prove our point to ourselves. Um, uh, there's a lot of those things in here. Uh, I guess I can plug a couple of those out and see what happens. I don't think this is going to dig at all. It's not doing nothing. Okay. Now that we've satisfied ourselves that that's not a worthwhile thing to do. Get time to get back to doing the stuff that needs to be done. Slightly less warm day than yesterday, so I think I'll survive wearing one extra layer of clothing. And get a little bit of extra safety out of it while I'm at it. I'm standing with my side facing the CRT, so if anything bad happens, I'm presenting the tube with the least amount of surface area with which I might become a pincushion. Not sure how well you can see this, but we've got uh, we've got fingers of delamination forming. New fingers of delamination. We're just gonna try to slowly grow those around the entire perimeter of the tube, and uh, slowly drag them inwards in a uniform pattern about center. I want this thing to uniformly delaminate. Probably not the best thing for you to tap the heat gun to a glass accidentally, but I'm not exactly the world's most coordinated person when I'm overheated, so.
successful round CRTs I've done with RCA type cateracts have uh, normally been a little bit worse cateracted than this. They normally behave slightly different than this, so this is a learning process for me. I have an idea of what I want to do and how I want to do it. I don't entirely know how it's going to go until I get this one done. Okay. I'm going to let that do its thing for a minute. Nice. This is coming along. Let's just very gently give her some heat to get the release going. I think that's moving all right. Let's have a temperature test on that. 170 in the center. That's where it's released now. And I think the safety glass is released. Now, let's, uh, let's see if we can lift it off very gently. And ha-ha, victory! Safety glass came off in one very hot piece. Uh, where do I put this? Uh, I need something soft. Ah, paper towel. That's just big enough to work. Yes. Okay. I'm going to very quickly and carefully peel this glue off. Come on, PBA. Whoo, that's hot glue. Somewhere out there, the arts and crafts grandma's giggling. Let's push this into the garage and just far enough that the door isn't going to hit it and quickly clean up our little staging area here and then close the garage door and we'll let it cool down. Sweet. Now that's how you cataract an RCA roundy CRT. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please uh, like and subscribe. This airline is now ready to go off to its new owner. We'll be picking up tomorrow, and this RCA, it's due for a date on my service bench. See you later. Life goes, you can do it perfectly a dozen times on your own. When you need to film it, it has hiccups.